right, today I want to talk about a topic which I think is really cool, and that is using bitwise operators to manage per permissions of a user on a website where you've only got one single number that represents any combination of permissions. So let's say on a website you've got permissions read, drink, sing, and delete. I mean, it could be things like add a user, edit a user, delete a user, or just read the user's permissions. That could be the list of things, but it can be anything at all. And that's why I picked these arbitrary values. What we're looking to do is have one single integer that represents whether or not the person can do any or all of these things. And it comes down to looking at the numbers as if they were the binary values, not the integer itself. If we look at the binary numbers for the numbers 0 through 10, you can see they increment the same way that decimal numbers do. You use up every combination of digit before you move on to the next column. So in decimal, you've got the tens column, the hundreds column, the thousands column, and so on. In binary, we've only got 1 and 0. So once you've used 1 and 0, you're sort of done. One comes after 0, then you've got 10 because you've used up every combination. Then we've got, and I'll zoom in here a little bit more, we've got 10, then 11. Now I've done every possible combination with two columns. I'll jump to the next column, 1, 10, 11. I've used up all the combinations. I jump to the next column, and so on. But if you think of each one of these digits, each one of these columns, as a separate yes or no value for whether or not somebody can do something, then each column represents one permission. And any combination of ones and zeros will represent whether or not the person can do whatever it is those permissions are. So if I've got four columns, I can do four different things and turn on one or any of the four, turn on or off each one of them individually. So I can make any combination to say the person can do this and this. Like here, the person can do this thing and this thing, but they can't do the two things that are zeros. So how do we target the individual things? Well, there's always going to be a value where one of the columns is set to a one and everything else is a zero. That's your target. So this, 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 and this. And it's always going to be a power of two, where those are the values that we use to represent what the permission is. Down below here, so one, two, four, and eight, those are my four permissions. In the binary, that's what they are. Now we're going to use bitwise operators. They're like mathematical operators, but for dealing with numbers at the binary level. And we're going to use these to see whether or not somebody can do any one of these things. All right. So I'm using the class syntax here to create an object. My constructor function, I'm calling when I use new. So new person, here's their name, and then optionally, they can pass in a number that represents all of the permissions. So I'm going to say that his permission right now was 5, and I just, I knew what that was. If I look up here, 5 is 0101, so the person can read and sing. Those two things together make up the integer 5. All right. For each of these people, we need to be able to find out whether they have a permission, add a new permission, and remove a permission. And we're going to use the bitwise operators to do that. We'll start with the get all. So I'm creating two people here. Steve had that 5. Joanne has no value, so it gets the default 0, which means no permissions to do anything at all. But I want to know, okay, this person that I've just created, what are their permissions right now? We're going to return an object, and I'm going to use these constants right here to represent these numbers. In an object, your keys have to be either a symbol or a string. These are numbers, but they will be converted to the string equivalent of those numbers. So I'm going to take read, and sing and delete. Those are my four things. And then to find out what the value is, 
I need to take their integer and do a bitwise operation to find out, hey, does the person have that? We're going to use the bitwise and operator. I'm going to wrap this in parentheses. I need to take this, which is going to be a numerical value, and I need to convert it into a Boolean. So these are all going to be true or false. And that's what we're going to have inside of here, is true or false values for each of these. So how does the bitwise AND operator work? I'll come up here to use a couple of examples. Let's say that this is the person's current integer for permission. So that's the number 5. If we look down here, there's the 5. With 5, I want to know if the person has this permission. So what is that number? That's the 4. That's one of our ones that we're testing with. That's the sing permission. Does the person who has this as their access number, do they have the permission to sing? Well, I'm using the bitwise AND operator. What it does is it looks at each of the columns individually. If both values inside the column are a 1, then the result of that is going to be a 1. If both of them are 0, the result is 0. If one of them is a 1, the result is 0. So this is going to be the result. If I AND this thing with the number 4, 4 is going to be my result, if the person has that. If the person didn't, so if this was a 0, my result would be 0. So I'm getting 0 or I'm getting 4, depending on whether or not the person has that permission. I'm then taking this number and I'm going to convert it into a Boolean, which basically means if it's 0, it's false. If it's anything other than 0, it's going to be true. So we take their number, we do the AND with that permission number, convert it to a Boolean. And then we're going to do the same thing with all of these. There. Now we can find out what the permissions are for each one of those things. I'm using the square brackets here because I don't want to leave it just as the word read. If I did that, like this, it's going to take this and convert those characters into a string. And it would be the same thing as if I wrote that. I don't want the word read to be the label. I want the number to be the label. And so that's why we have this, the square brackets. All right, now that we have that done, we'll come down here and we can check to see what the permissions are for each of these people. So we can say steve.access. That will tell me what my number is. It should say 5. And then I'm going to write out Steve get all. I want to see the whole object. We'll do the same thing for Joanne. There we go. So with 5, my read permission is true. Look up here. So read is true. Drink is false. Sing is true. Delete is false. And they're all false for Joanne because she has the default zero. Now let's say that I want to turn on drink, sing, and delete. Those three things. I want to turn those all on for the second user here, Joanne. How do we do that? Well, we're going to use this add permission method. We're going to say, actually here, I'll Leave that uncommented. So for Joanne, I want to add a permission, and then I need to pass in which permission it is. So to here, which is the one that I'm adding? Well, I can use these constants that we created up here. Drink, sing, delete. Those are the three that I wanted to add. So down here, we're going to say, I want to add drink, sing, and delete calling this method three times, and we're adding a permission each time. How do we do that with bitwise operators? Okay, go back up to the top here, look at the different ones. The bitwise OR, 
same sort of idea. We're looking at the individual values of the bits. And if either the top, the bottom, or both are 1, then the result is going to be 1. So what were we doing? We wanted to add three of those things. We wanted to add number 2, number 4, number 8. So those three columns we want to add, or, or in this case, bitwise or, we want to turn those on. The result would be this. So if it was a 5 and we did this, that's our result. If it was zeros for all of them, then our result is going to be this. Because anywhere there's a 1, even if they already had it and we tried to add it, 1 or both means we get 1s. If neither, then we get a 0. So that's all we have to do is use the bitwise OR to turn something on. So we're going to say this.access. We want to update that integer to say this.access or the permission that's being passed in. Done. That's it. That's all we have to do. So for Joanne, I'll comment the Steve one out. So for Joanne, we turned on three, and then we're going to take a look at it. There we go. 14 is going to be the new access number. One for reading is still false, but the other three are all true. So that's it. It's all we had to do to turn on the permissions. If we did uh, Steve, Steve already had the permission. We saw he had read and sing, one and four. There we go. He still got read and sing. Doing the OR operation with the bitwise operator doesn't change this. It stays turned on. All right, our last step here is the remove permissions. This one's a little bit trickier, but same concept, bitwise operator. We're using the exclusive OR operator here. And with this one, it's if one of the two is a one, the result is one. If both are zeros, we get a zero. If both are ones, we get a zero. So if we had that five and then we did an exclusive OR with one, we're basically turning this one off. And that's what we want to do. If the person already has that permission, we want to turn it off. Now, if they don't, if this was a zero, we would end up turning it back on. They didn't have it. We said delete it. We've turned it back on. We don't want to do that. So we want to make sure that we only do this operation when the person has the permission. So we'll do a test to see if the person has it. Say if this dot access, or sorry, this dot get all. That gives us this whole object, and then we want to get that permission. If the person does have this permission, so we can take a look at this one. Here, let me finish that line. You want to look at an individual permission? We can do this. You do the get all, you get that object that has all of the permissions. It looks like this. And then I want to know, hey, for Singh, number four, was that true? Well, take a look. True, true. So both Steve and Joanne had that permission. If we look at read. True, false. So Steve does have the read permission, but Joanne does not. We're doing this as our check. So when the person calls, remove permission. We're going to pass in one of these numbers. So we'll call read for Joanne because she didn't have it. So we want to check that. And then we'll call the same thing for Steve. So we're trying to remove the read permission from both Steve and Joanne. Joanne didn't have it, Steve did. 
so it'll be a test. This.access equals this.access with our exclusive or operation on the permission being passed in. So we're only doing this if they do have the permission and it's going to flip this flip the bit, change it from a one to a zero. And then we'll take a look at both Steve and Joanne after we've removed these. There we go. So Steve Read is turned off. Joanne, read is turned off. And Joanne had everything else turned on. And Steve only, ha <clears throat> only had that one other permission for Sing turned on. And that's it. That is how you can manage multiple permissions for users on your website using a single number and the Bitwise operators. I hope that sparks some interest in the Bitwise operators for you. If you have any questions, I'll answer as many as I have time for down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.